virtual local area networks, VLANs. So, in most basic switch configurations, all the ports are part of a single broadcast domain. Because as we said before, broadcast domains are broken apart by routers, not by switches. So each port is its own collision domain, but they all still share a single broadcast domain. With a VLAN, you're able to break out certain ports to be parts of different broadcast domains. And this is usually supported on layer 3 switches, or multi-layer switches. Before we had the advent of the VLANs, though, if you wanted to have the network separated by a different department, you had to have physically separate switches. And each of these had to be served by separate routers. Now with VLANs, we can actually have different logical networks, even though they're sharing the same physical switch hardware. And this gives us added security and efficiency. So as you can see here in this example, we might have two departments, like the engineering department and the marketing department. And we want to keep their network traffic separate. So we can assign different ports to different VLANs. In this case, we have ports 2, 3, and 5 on the engineering VLAN, and we have ports 4, 6, and 7 on the marketing VLAN. So before we used VLANs, we had different switches for each of these networks. So you can see the red network and the blue network. We had a different switch for each one. And if the computers were on different floors, we might have two different switches serving those. So the blue ones, we had PCs going to each of the blue switches and them tied together, going back to a single router. And then the red network was also tied together through that router. And the router is what broke up those broadcast domains into the red and blue networks. With VLANs, though, I can use a single switch on a floor and serve two different networks. So in this case, I have the red and blue PCs from upstairs on one switch and the red and blue PCs from downstairs on another switch, but I can keep their traffic separate as designated by these red and blue lines, and they go back to the router um, to be serviced and go out of the network. But in between themselves, they are in their own separate uh, bro uh, broadcast domains at this point. The other thing we can do is we can do what's called VLAN trunking. So if you notice in this last image here, we had two physical cables being taken up going between the two switches to carry the network traffic, one for red and one for blue. When we do VLAN trunking, we can combine those onto a single cable. And the way we do that is the traffic is actually marked whether which VLAN it's part of, so they can share the same cable and be logically separated. So this saves us with cabling and wiring going between floors and between buildings. In this case, we have multiple VLANs being transmitted over the same physical cable, which we call trunking, which is known as 802.1Q. 802.1Q is VLAN trunking. So with VLAN trunking, we have our native VLAN, which is one that is untagged. Any traffic that is not tagged is considered the native VLAN. Every other VLAN you're going to have is going to have a 4-byte identifier, which is called its tag, which is its tag control identifier or tag control uh, or tag protocol identifier. You can see in the top we have an untagged VLAN and then in the second one there you'll see we added that 2-byte and 2-byte TPI TCI right there in the middle which is that VLAN tagging and that will identify the fact that that traffic is part of the blue VLAN or the red VLAN or whatever other VLAN you're dealing with. And that is the basics of virtual local area networks.